You guys like Spider-Man? Sure hope so, because if you don't, uh, we're not gonna have much to talk about for the next 20 minutes or so, and uh, this could potentially get awkward. What I have here is this footage that Chris shot of either the actual Spider-Man or somebody pretending to be Spider-Man. He wasn't really clear on who's in the costume, so I'm not 100% sure, but uh, let's prep this for King. So um, I don't really want to rotoscope around his head and stuff too much, so I'm just gonna skip to the part where his head is already cleared frame here, so it's in the green screen. That's a good way to be lazy. And I'll trim it off at the end when he's cleared frame because it does not make sense to not also, this is supposed to be Spider-Man crawling on a wall. It was shot sideways, which is a good idea, good way to pay attention to realism, I suppose. But I think it would be more impressive if he was climbing up instead of down. So let's just give this a little spinny spin. And there we go. So obviously, first we probably want to pee out this green. So I'm gonna make a duplicate of this and I'll turn off my original just so I have a copy to work with. And you know what, before we do that, this footage is uh, not that pretty looking, so we can just pretty it up a little bit with the curves and just give it a little more color. Not too much, just a little bit. Goes a long way and that already looks a lot better. And I'll copy that to the original because I know I'm gonna need it. So uh, let's go ahead and key them out like I promised. So I'm gonna drop on a key light effect. Just drop that on and select the green. Well, I missed. There we go. Select that green and like magic, it has turned invisible. Let's hit up the screen mat so we can see what we're really looking at and play around with these settings until it starts to look better. Okay, that Spider-Man keyed away from the green background, but we still have this floor here, which is a bit of an issue. So what I'm gonna do right now is draw a garbage mat around the part where the green screen was because we know everything that was in the confines of this green screen is good to go. So we're just gonna cut out and save it. By the way, if you have a decent answer to this, leave it in the comments and let me know. Why do these green screens always have a black border? It's always an issue. Why don't they just make it green? I feel like anytime the entire green screen is in the shot, this black border does nothing but cause me trouble. Now it would cause a little bit of trouble if it was green too, but not as much, I don't think. But anyway, that's uh, that's our Spider-Man mostly, but we need to get his legs and stuff. So let's duplicate our footage again. And now we have to start getting tricky. Now, um, like last week I posted a video about how to avoid rotoscoping in After Effects and I gave it a big clickbait thumbnail that said never rotoscope again. It's not totally accurate to how the situation is gonna play out, but uh, there's some good tips in there and I'm gonna use some of them now. And if you want more information, I'll link it at the end of this video in the in the card, in the, the end slate. So um, we wanna kind of extract Spider-Man from this ground. So we're gonna use the extract filter and I'm just gonna flip through the channels to see which one is gonna give us the best results. So this red one, obviously no good because uh, the red is looking really white and the ground is looking really white. Green channel looks very good. All of Spider-Man looks like he's wearing dark clothes and the ground looks very bright. So that's fantastic. And then blue, uh, you know, it could work, but not as well as green. So let's go with green. So I'm going to tell it to key out the green channel. And then we'll just move this slider until that ground is starting to disappear. Don't worry about losing the parts that are here above the green screen because we already have them preserved in this layer and we're gonna combine all these together. So start losing those, uh, try not to cry too much about it because it uh, doesn't really matter. We're just focusing on this ground here. So we pretty much got the ground disappeared, but what I wanna go ahead and do is bring back in some of those shadows because those are good. We do wanna use those. So that's looking pretty nice and pretty clean. So I'll just go ahead and mask around that portion, which is our usable portion from this layer. Pretty good, um, but now we just have this gap that we need to fill in, and this is gonna be the worst part because this is the thing I was talking about with the, with the stupid edge of the green screen. So I'm gonna try and fill that in by doing some reverse keying. So let's go ahead and drop our key light back on, and this time I'm gonna select the red. And I go to my screen mat and try to just make sure that's as close, it's as clean as possible. And actually that one click looks pretty good. Maybe I'll just bring in my black a little bit. 
I'll set it to intermediate and then I'll use an invert effect and we'll tell it to invert the alpha. So now I'm left with just the red. And then if I duplicate that again, just duplicate that whole layer and then I'll select the blue instead of the red and just kind of do the same thing but with the blue. Now I have the blue on this layer here. So if we combine all those together, it looks like we have ourselves a Spider-Man going. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab all those except for the bottom one and pre-compose them. And I can see that I've got some junk coming in from the top here. So I can cut that out of my new pre-comp. And I'm gonna use this as an alpha mat for my old layer. And now we've got Spider-Man all cut out and I didn't have to do any roto or anything to get rid of the parts in the bottom that cross the screen. And the only issue we really have left is this kind of green halo. So on our bottom piece of footage here, we can add an effect called hue and saturation. And we can tell it to affect just the green channels and we can bring down the saturation. And as you can see, it didn't really do anything because the parts of the green that that's affecting have already been keyed out. But using these controls here, we can tell it to affect more colors. So we have red and blue being affected, but mostly this red. So we want this to come more into the red and a little bit more into the blue to get rid of that green. I'll even shift the hue of it to make it more red so it blends in with the rest of the red. And there we go, that's Spider-Man. So what else do I have? I have this piece of footage here, which is some footage of New York City shot from the street. So let's bring that into a brand new composition and kind of decide where we want to put Spider-Man. And I want to put him on this building here, kind of next to this window, I think. So if I scrub forward to where that window is totally out of frame. I know that I don't need this composition here anymore, so I'll trim it down there. And so I'm gonna track the camera right now. So I'll apply a 3D camera tracker and I'll just chill out while it does its thing. You know, I secretly always breathe a sigh of relief when this camera tracker works on the first try. Cause sometimes you need to go into the advanced and, and put in information there and I just, I don't like doing it. But uh, this seems to have worked pretty solidly. And as a matter of fact, we can create a solid and stick it right here. And now it's, you know, exactly where I want it to be in 3D space. So let's bring in my Spider-Man, which as you might expect from me, I forgot to label, so just call it Spider-Man. And I'm gonna make him 3D, and I definitely should move the anchor point to down where his feet and hands are, which will make it more easy to control. And now, if I hold down Shift and I parent it to my solid, it will take its exact position in 3D space, which you know, a lot of times when I see people making tutorials, they do a whole lot of copy and paste when it comes to these positions and that's how you avoid it. Just hold down shift and parent it and you can save yourself a lot of trouble that way. So I don't want to see you guys copy pasting anymore in this type of situation. But now we need to change the Y rotation of it to negative 90 so he'll be well, let's go with 90 because I didn't work there. So now he's perpendicular to the wall and he's huge but he's on the wall in 3D space. So that's the effect. Now we just need to kind of get him more in the shot. So we need to shrink him down to where he looks like he could probably be the size where he could be looking out of one of these windows. So it's more, more human size there. And so he walks out of frame, of course. So what I want to do is I want to move him in time so that when he starts exiting the frame, he's kind of out of the frame anyway. Right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna keep an eye on this window and I just kind of follow it with my eyes until it starts to exit the frame. And then I know that's where I need Spider-Man to be exiting the frame too. So I turn it back on and I'll just drag him into the right time. I can move him a little bit to get him into a better space, but I'm not gonna move him off of the wall. I'm just moving him along the wall. Cool, now no one has to know. So another thing I can do here is I can right click on that layer and hit time, enable time remapping. And then I can pull out the beginning of this layer and now it's not gonna just pop into place, but it is gonna kind of be frozen in time until it starts moving again. And what I wanna do with that is I'll just go to the first keyframe of this time remap and I'll also set a keyframe for the position and then I'm gonna jump back a few frames and I'm gonna move Spider-Man to be over here out of the frame. So. It's like he, he's jumping into the frame. And you might have to move this keyframe around to get your timing 
right and then I can just turn on the motion blur for him and the motion blur for the comp so that now he's jumping onto the wall cool and then the only other thing I really have left to do is here he holds up his hand as if to shoot some web because spider people do that so I need to drop in a web effect which is going to be really easy because I know about a secret website called footagecrate.com which just so happens to have Spider-Man web you can download. So there's some on the front page at the time of the recording because we just added them. But uh, if you want to see all of them, you can either go to the action and horror and then hit 3D action. They're all going to be here in the 3D action section. And there's a lot to choose from, including these webbing impacts, which are pretty great. But you can also just do a search for web and they'll all pop up too. So just using the search function is fine. And I just want to find one that I think is going to fit my shot. I think I want to try this one and if I'm wrong I'm wrong and I'll replace it with something else. Okay so I'll bring that into the shot and I'll have it start at this frame where Spider-Man's holding up his hand. And the way these webs are set up the anchor point is already going to be in pretty much the right spot so we don't have to worry about that. I'm going to make it 3D and I'm going to hold down shift like before and parent it to the Spider-Man so it's in the right place but it's definitely not the right size. So I'm just going to twist that a little bit so the web is shooting more down and I'm going to move it in space so it's touching his hand instead of his feet. It jumped to his feet because that's where the anchor point is but it's still a good starting place. So I'll scale that up and maybe rotate it on the Z so it's shooting more kind of towards us okay. and it's cutting off a little bit so I'll just stretch it out all right and now I think we're just going to go ahead and pre-compose all these layers so I'm going to hit Control a to select them all and Control shift c to pre-compose all of them together so that this way I can just kind of reframe it a little bit because I mean I have spider-man small on purpose but he's really tiny so maybe if I just scale this up to 120 or something like that a little bit more and just get that more framed so we can actually see spider-man a little bit better I'd also like to color correct spider-man to bring him a little bit more into this world because he's looking and hecka saturated right now so the way I always color correct is usually the same thing as I put the levels effect on there drop that right on to spider-man and then try to make it match by looking through the different channels so here's our red channel obviously spider-man is looking too bright which is to be expected because I mean he's wearing a red suit but maybe we can bring that down a little bit in our green channel it might be pretty much okay and let's check out the blue channel kind of do the same thing to it that we did to the red okay and that's looking better he's looking a little more washed out which i mean in a good way because that's what our background footage looks like too so it's a little more realistic all right and to finalize this effect i want to add a little bit of sound design. So I've actually imported it here into Premiere where it's playing back much more smoothly than it was in After Effects so you can see what it actually looks like. And we need to add some sound so let's head over to soundscrate.com and we have actually some Spider-Man-ish web shooter sound effects and I can find them very easily by typing the word web here and searching for it. And here you have several web shooters. And I'm sorry if they don't sound wonderful. I'm playing them through my speaker and capturing them through the microphone and they're playing through, through your speakers, obviously. So uh, you're gonna get a lot of, um, they might not sound perfect, but uh, you know, they're, I'm going to include this sound design in the video itself. So you're going to end, in the end, you're going to know what these are supposed to sound like. But uh, my favorite is actually number three. So I'm just going to go ahead and download that. Downloads very quickly and just bring that into my project. And I'm going to line it up with the part where Spider-Man squirts out his web. I think right there. Back it up a little bit. Okay, and maybe we might need another one to play in the background since he probably swung in from a web as well. So that one number four I think is more convincing as being further away. So let's just bring that in and I'm going to turn the volume on it way down. 
Let's see what we can find in the way of a whoosh. There's a lot to choose from, so be prepared for me to play a bunch of whooshes and swooshes. Number two is not going to work at all for this, but it's pretty hilarious. Might actually go with fighting underscore swoosh kick one. Just download that real quick and bring that in and place it roughly where it should go. And I might be turning down the volume on that as well. And finally, we're going to want to add a little bit of ambient sound. You always want to have some ambience, unless if you have music playing in your scene, you might could get away with not having ambient noise, but I'm just going to go ahead and add some. So I'm going to search for the word amb ambient and just see what I can find. A lot of these are music. So you don't necessarily need one for city. I'm actually going to try this forest one. I'm just going to download that because I'm just going to bring that in and turn the volume on it way down also real quiet. And I think it adds what we need it to. So that's going to be it for the tutorial. I appreciate you guys watching. Hope you learned a little bit. Hope you found it interesting at least. And I hope to have you come back and check out the next video. It should be coming out pretty soon. So bye guys.